listening to The David Pakman Show, Tuesday through Friday nights at 8 on WHAV. Lack of logic and reason are exposed on The David Pakman Show as newsmakers collapse under cross-examination. Remember, only local radio can bring you this talk opportunity, but only WHAV does. Wave weather! I'm WHAV meteorologist Gary Best with Wave Weather. Some occasional cloudiness moving into the Merrimack Valley during the night. Low temperatures, upper 40s to low 50s. During the day Tuesday, partial sunshine and 65 to 70. Part the cloudy on Tuesday night. Low temperatures no lower than the low 50s then. And Wednesday and Thursday, mostly sunny skies up between 70 and 75. This is Gary Best. Your next Wave Weather coming up in 30 minutes. From the Edwin B. Johnson Newsroom, WHAV presents the Open Mic Show with Tim Coco. Make your voice heard. Call 978-374-1900. That's 978-374-1900. Or email tcoco at whav.net. Good evening and welcome everyone to the Open Mic Show. I'm Tim Coco, your host. Chris Porter is producing in Master Control. Coming up just after the news at 7 o'clock, two delightful guests are joining us, Eva and Lisa, to talk about an event coming up uh, for uh, Asperger Works. Uh, It's an event uh, to raise funds for a brand new organization that both helps employers uh, find workers who are on the autism spectrum and employees, potential employees, uh, to help integrate them into the workplace. Even if they're already working, I understand, uh, just a few few, few tips and ideas, uh, and they'll be able to help us with that, but mostly to tell us about this great event coming up next month. Obviously, uh, unless you've been asleep, uh, Haverhill suffered a very big fire uh, yesterday. WHAV was there. You probably have caught many of our reports. Uh, there are some updates. We'll go over that tonight. Uh, perhaps you were there. Perhaps you saw the smoke from, from, from an odd location. People saw it, uh, you know, across the Merrimack Valley. Maybe uh, you wondered what it was and you have a thought you want to share with us, we'll have open lines for the first half hour, 978-374-1900. Then about 7.30 tonight, David Goudsworth is going to be appearing by telephone. He's going to be discussing this book uh, called Snowbound with Zombies, brand new book edited by David Goudswood uh, with many, many uh, authors, contemporary authors, uh, writing a uh, in a supernatural style, uh, uh, something that John Greenleaf Woodier himself uh, first published when he was a, a young author. Everyone knows Whittier for Snowbound and for his other works. Few know that he first started out writing about supernatural tales. David Gounds will tell us more about that. And the book I'm holding, you know, you can't seem to see us on Haverhill Community Television for some reason. Uh, maybe that'll be fixed in time, but you can watch us at whav.tv. Uh, this book, which uh, the 322 pages, uh, this book. We're going to give away to a lucky WHAV caller tonight. So stand by and learn how you can get this book. Now, I'm going to ask that the person who wins the book pick it up at the Snowbound with Zombies event this weekend at Whittier Birthplace between 1 and 3 p.m. on Saturday to actually get it autographed. So that'll be an extra special treat. So we'll, we'll talk more about how you can win this book, brand new book. You might be the very first person outside of the authors to have a copy. Uh, you'll be able to win this book take it to the event, or actually pick it up at the event, and get it autographed. Snowbound with Zombies, Tales of the Supernatural, inspired by the life and work of John Greenleaf Whittier, edited by David Goutswood, who will be joining us by telephone at about 7.30. 
You can watch and listen to the Open Mic Show between 6.30 and 8.30 most Monday nights at whav.tv on your computer or smartphone and on Haverhill Community Television Channel 22. Our thanks go out to the board, staff, members, and management of Haverhill Community Television. Also, I'd like to thank those cable television stations that run WHAV's audio 24 hours a day, seven days a week, depending on other programming. And those are Andover Channel 8, Methuen Channels 8 and 22 on Comcast, Channel 32 on Verizon Fios, Plasto Channels 17 and 23, Sandown Channel 17. You can also listen to WHAV around the clock, seven days a week, at whav.net. And AM Radio 1640, for those of you lucky enough to be in, within its reception area in northern Haverhill, Plasto, and Atkinson, New Hampshire, a brand new FM station at 97.9 is coming soon. What will help speed up that process, if you could uh, reach into your, your pocket or your wallet or your piggy bank or just the change in the mattress would help even, uh, if you could uh, consider a contribution to nonprofit WHAV, uh, if you call 978 374 1900. Chris will give you the address where you can mail uh, a check or he'll take your credit card over the phone. If you like to kind of explore in your own time, there's also a place to um, become a member uh, on whav.net. There's also a place where you can click anytime you see Tom Bergeron's photo. He's our honorary chairperson. Any place you see Tom's photo, you can click and make a contribution right online. And that will be bring WHAV FM 97.9 to you all that much faster. To interact with this program, there are several things you can do. If you want to win a prize, and there will be a few tonight, you have to call and talk to me. That's 978-374-1900. That's a pretty easy number to remember, 374-1900. If uh, you just want to make a comment or send me a tip or uh, something you wouldn't rather be associated with, you can email me directly at tcoco, T-C-O-C-O, at whav.net. There's also a message board below the TV screen on your computer or smartphone at whav.tv. Now, speaking of prizes, again, we're going to be coming up with a with the means for you to win your own copy, absolutely free, 322-page book, brand new. Uh, Snowbound with Zombies. We're going to be telling you how you can win that book tonight and pick it up during the author's event and uh, get it autographed. Uh, but before we do that, of course, we're still taking birthdays for October. October birthdays and October wedding anniversaries uh, to win a free 7-inch cake from Albie D's Second Generation Italian Bakery, 140 South Main Street in Bradford. All you have to do is call me and wish someone a happy birthday or a couple a happy anniversary and we'll put the recipient's name into the drawing which will draw I guess it'll be next week the last Monday of the month and now this is really a great prize and the best of all and Brian has figured this out uh, you uh, make sure you give it to someone who lives close by so that they, they feel guilty not sharing a piece of that delicious cake with you. So you, you do that. <laughs> so that's, a, that's one way to make sure that um, you get a piece of cake. And it is a great cake. Choice of chocolate or vanilla, sugar, frosting. And it's really easy. It, it's really that easy. You just wish someone a happy birthday or a couple a happy anniversary. If uh, the name is drawn at the end of the month, uh, we'll send a letter telling you what to do next. It's that easy. All right. Now, there's the Whittier Birthplace is still open for the season. I want to tell you that this Saturday will be free, absolutely free, to tour the Whittier Birthplace because that's when the authors will be there uh, for with the new book. But any other time you want to go, you can win a free pass, a free pass to the John Greenleaf Whittier Birthplace, 305 Whittier Road in Haverhill. If you don't know where that is, that's just right off Route 110 as you're heading toward Merrimack. But if you act before midnight tomorrow, actually, you can act tonight, too, uh, 
you also get free admission to the Whittier Home Museum, 86 Friend Street in Amesbury. Whittier lived in Haverhill till 1836, then he moved to Amesbury. Both of his homes are open to the public, so that's a real treat there. So 978-374-1900, don't be shy. Now, meanwhile, Chris is thinking up a grand idea, putting him on the spot, for what you'll have to do. And maybe David Giles would want to private text message me or something with ideas, too. But we're trying to figure out the best kind of contest to give away this book, Snowbound with Zombies, Tales of the Supernatural. These are some great contemporary authors. There's also some of Whittier's own work within. 322-page book. Uh, really, literally, almost, hot off the press. I don't think you'll find it in circulation anywhere. I don't think it's on Amazon.com yet. So you could be one of the first to have this book. You can pick it up. If you win tonight, you can pick it up at the author's event at Whittier Birthplace, Saturday between 1 and 3. And uh, there'll be like 10 authors there, 10 10, uh, authors who participated in writing this uh, anthology. They'll be there to actually sign your copy. Uh, now, I can't say that it'll be, um, uh, you know, be a million-dollar book with those signatures in it, but, you know, you never know how those things work, so keep that in mind. So, uh, Chris and David, come up with great ideas for how I should give away this book. Okay. If you're just joining us, again, a reminder, at 7 o'clock... Eva and Lisa are going to be here talking about Asperger Works first first time event uh, that is going to uh, help uh, support the launch of Asperger Works. And it is, again, I'm going to do this off the top of my head, and they can maybe make faces at me in the window if I'm wrong. But this is uh, services. Uh, Asperger Works provides services um, both for the person looking for work or the employer looking for really good, reliable people. So that's a a good way. Okay, I just got a thumbs up from Lisa. Uh, Eva's hiding, so I don't know. Okay, no, I got another thumbs up. All right, all right. So, uh, but uh, that's my quick summary. But it's a, you know, um, Asperger's, it's it's on the autism spectrum. And uh, it's more common than a lot of people believe. Uh, or maybe they don't want to believe it, but it's actually pretty, very, pretty common. And uh, this organization is really desperately needed. And it's founded by Haverhill people, and I think you're going to be very impressed. What's that? Ann Lawrence. Ann Lawrence people. But uh, I, I know the, the, the family matriarch. <laughs> Who's a Haverhill person, right? (laughs) All right. We like to plug Haverhill. You know, when Lawrence puts us on their cable TV system, we might say more things about Lawrence. But (laughs) you can work on that. You can work to them. (laughs) All right. So in any event, uh, so that's coming up. And then David Goudswood at about 7.30. All right, did you see the fire yesterday? Maybe you saw at least the smoke. Started in the afternoon. WHAV was at Tattersall Farm, and that was a great day. Uh, Maybe some of you were also there. I know many of you stopped by our table. Uh, But as uh, people were leaving Tattersall Farm, you could see this this very black smoke in the distance. It was rather ominous. And from Tattersall, you really weren't sure where it was coming from. My, My first guess was, my goodness, it's somewhere near the high school, but no, it was much further down near Lafayette Square, Stevens Street. But maybe you have an observation. I will tell you that, um, (laughs) in a way, I I find this funny, but I shouldn't. Um, Someone stole the WHAV magnetic signs off the WHAV car at the fire. Uh, So someone. (laughs) So there are souvenir hunters, souvenir hunters. I guess maybe that's what I get for magnetic signs. Uh, Maybe I'm going to have to have them actually just painted on the car in the future. So uh, Chris hadn't heard that before, and he's uh, he's laughing, uh, you know. Uh, 
I don't, I don't know why we're laughing. It's just kind of an odd thing. So the uh, WHAV color signs on the doors of the vehicle uh, were taken. So maybe uh, maybe one of you has it up on your wall now and has built a shrine around it. That's okay. Just send uh, send some guilt money to us. Twenty five dollars for members. Ten do- uh, for uh, ordinary membership. Ten dollars for students or senior citizens. If you want to be even more generous, we certainly uh, invite you to do that to help put ninety seven. Point nine FM on the air. Uh, click on Tom Bergeron's photo anywhere you see it at whav.net, and you can make a direct contribution using your credit or debit card. You might even might even be able to take gift cards. I'm not sure. Maybe you got a gift card and you hadn't really thought about how to use that. Well, here's a good cause. <laughs> At the very least, we'll buy new signs for the car. <laughs> All right. So, but any of anyone there? Um, we're going to go to a, a break. But, you know, get your fingers on your dials or your push buttons, 978-374-1900. like to hear your thoughts on yesterday's fire and the fact that 19 other towns participated. Now, isn't that, isn't that a good deed, 19 other towns participating in mutual aid? You'll hear more about that during the news at 7 o'clock when we'll hear from Interim Fire Chief John Paro. So uh, get your fingers on the dials, get ready to dial, and right now you're going to hear about this day in Massachusetts history, and then we'll be back. Open mic! Tim Coco and the Open Mic will be right back. Get in on the action. Call 978-374-1900 or email tcoco at whav.net. If you are enjoying this program, please consider making a donation right now. Your donations to not-for-profit WHAV help keep these vital community services on the air. Donate online at www.whav.net. Your membership enables WHAV to remain local and independent. Consider joining at WHAV.net. Catch the wave! Johnny Dollar. The cat with the proverbial nine lives isn't in the same league with yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Dollar has flirted with the Grim Reaper scores of times. But after every close shave, he's lived to total up his imaginative expense account. Solving a dangerous, exciting mystery, nabbing a fraud or killer out to make an insurance haul, that's Johnny Dollar's specialty every Sunday on CBS Radio. Every item in Johnny's expense account got there the hard way. No armchair detective, he, the guy who must find the fraud, isolate the insurance killer, and come away alive with his proof. For excitement without a break, make yours truly, Johnny Dollar, a regular Sunday habit. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, is heard at 10 p.m. Sunday night as part of WHAV's nightly drama lineup. Today is September 21st. On this day in 1938, a hurricane of astonishing force ravaged New England. Having gone to bed the night before to radio forecasts of scattered rain and fresh southerly winds, New Englanders woke on the 21st and went about their weekday routines. At least they did until the storm broke in mid-afternoon. Within minutes, the hurricane leveled virtually everything in its path. The whirling, shrieking winds and rushing waters took more than 600 lives and caused damage estimated between 6 and 12 billion in today's dollars. Technology now provides enough warning to evacuate vulnerable areas, so a storm of similar magnitude might take fewer lives today. But the pace of development along the coast means that property and environmental damage would undoubtedly be many times greater. For more about this and other Mass Moments, go online to massmoments.org. Brought to you by the Massachusetts Foundation for the Humanities. W-H-A-V! Open mic! From the Edwin B. Johnson Newsroom, WHAV presents the Open Mic Show with Tim Coco. Make your voice heard. Call 978-374-1900. That's 978-374-1900. Or email tcoco at whav.net. Welcome back to the Open Mic Show, a 50-year staple of democracy in the Merrimack Valley. This hour of Open Mic being brought to you by Haverhill Bank. 
just one bank. Let's uh, let's not waste any time. Let's go right to the phones. You are on the open mic. Hello, Tim. Hey, Brian. How are you? I'm hanging in. All right, Brian, long-time caller. Uh, glad you're participating tonight. What's on your mind? Well, first, before I forget, Diana didn't get her thing yet. <laughs> All right, let me make another note to myself. Because now, last week we, we learned that someone, um, someone uh, remembers receiving an envelope from WHAV, not, not your person, and um, figured it was just junk mail and throw it away. So we're... We're resending one, but uh, what was the name of the winner? Diana. Okay, let me just, I'm going to check that during the break and just see if that went out. Okay, all right, so thanks for letting me know that. All right, so what else is on your mind, or I can start asking you 20 questions. <laughs> well, you know, um, I wanted to mentioned something about the um, my experience with the uh, the Haverhill Police Department. I haven't been arrested or anything. Oh no, that's right. You, I think you started. You gave us kind of a heads up last week that you met with uh, detectives finally. Uh yeah, last month, and uh, uh, it's confusing. I don't want to really get anybody into any kind of trouble. I don't think I would anyway, but uh, I don't feel all that welcome over there because I just wasn't hearing from them and then when I did meet with him briefly uh, last month he told me the opposite of uh, what he had told me five months before so all right why don't you refresh our memories what did he tell you five months ago or five months before and what is the situation now and listeners in case you're wondering what this is about uh, Brian was the the victim of a rather large theft last year it's been a year I guess right it has been a year and uh, a victim of a rather large theft his entire life savings was taken including the safe it was in from his home and um, it obviously would be greatly uh, harmful to any of us. Uh, Brian has, uh, it's not like Brian can just go out tomorrow and start working. He's also blind, and I don't know exactly how old you are, but um, I don't oh, know. Oh, yes, you do. Do I? <laughs> Actually, I might. Uh, let me think about that. But in any event, I don't think uh, Br Brian's going to go out uh, landscaping uh, for a living now. So, yeah. <clears throat> um, so uh, the, the story, as we know, is the police uh, began an investigation. Uh, detectives were on it. Uh, there was a lead, uh, I believe, in the, the southeast United States. And I think that's where we left off with listeners, Brian. So uh, correct anything I've done wrong or, or fill us in from there. Well, not the southeast United States, but, um, but you know, the detectives, as a matter of course, uh, will speak to people of interest, you know, to find out all they can. They've done that. And uh, what I was told uh, five months ago was this person who he strongly suspected had something to do with it uh, was telling the truth. And then I was just told last month that he thinks that that person is the person who actually did it. And so. Uh, so, so the, he, he believes they found the person. Yeah, a great distance away, but, um, but number one, I don't believe it. <laughs> oh, you don't? Okay. I don't believe it, and it's just the opposite of what he told me. All right. Yeah, so, and he said if he said that, he misspoke. Well, I wasn't going to get into any arguments. Uh, let me, let me make sure I understand. <laughs> so the, the current information is they have an I they they believe they have identified the suspect. Now, whether or not that means anything right now, you don't, I don't think it means much because they're not investigating anymore. It's on the shelf. All right. So. Uh, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm assuming listeners are in the same boat I am in and, and confused. So what's preventing them from following up on this lead? That you don't believe it or? I don't believe it. Okay. No, I don't believe it. And, uh, and he said that uh, if that's what he led me to believe, then he misspoke. Well, I was thinking about that. And he was quite definite five months ago 
with uh, his evaluation. And uh, so I thought, well, okay. But, you know, he wasn't finished talking with people either at that point. All right. And it's not like I'm going to call and get any more information because, I mean, for one thing, I won't get my call returned anyway. And uh, what else can I say? What else can I do? Because they're not going to do anything more. So they've hit what they call the dead end, and that's it. Oh, well, that uh, that does not sound good. Uh, I, I'm I haven't not questioning their abilities at all. You know, I, you know, I think we got some good people, and uh, I just don't understand it. And I guess I never will. No, I guess not. Well, that's really bad news because then so that uh, so the, you have little hope at this point. Is that it? Oh, none. <laughs> no hope at all. Well, you know, friends, I, you know, I don't want to put Brian on the spot or embarrass him, but there is a fund, um, the Brian Langlois Relief Fund, and you can contribute at any Haverhill Bank branch, uh, and there are quite a few around here. Uh, you can't go to Lafayette right now, I understand, because of the road being blocked because of the fire, but you can go to the main office on Merrimack Street, or you can go to the Bradford branch or Rosemont, up Ro Main and Rosemont, um, you can go to Merrimack, Mass. You can go to Salem, New Hampshire. But go to any any branch of Haverhill Bank, and if you would uh, uh, could help Brian out, make a contribution. I don't want to embarrass him, putting him on the spot. But uh, oh, this go ahead, embarrass away. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, it, I mean, this is really bad news. I mean, you know, there's been this. I've been hoping, frankly, that you know this. Uh, you know, maybe the safe would turn up on the side of the road. They couldn't get it open or something, and the money's all there, uh, yeah, or right. or whatever. <laughs> Well, uh, you know, I guess uh, Brian's become uh, understandably more of a pessimist here, but uh, so... Um, I'm normally not a pessimistic person, but... Well, after all that's happened to you, and I could I could embarrass you further by recounting all the things, but I mean, uh, Brian lost his, his wife uh, last year as well. His boyhood home uh, was... Um, uh, a, a sale of his boyhood home. He couldn't live there himself. Uh, he and his wife were both handicapped. Uh, couldn't live there himself. Uh, trying to trying to sell it, do the right thing, and the the city puts a condemnation order to tear it down. And um, the, of course, the buyer runs away. Wouldn't you? And then, uh, then you know, at some point, uh, saner minds prevailed. He was able to find a buyer, uh, kind of under distressed circumstances, and the house was torn down anyway, uh, not by the city, but by the the buyer. Uh, but nevertheless, I'm sure a whole uh, episode uh, had an impact on values. Uh, his wife, also blind, had multiple sclerosis. I mean, can you make it any worse? Um, passed away a uh, year ago, last month, I think and then uh, Leslie, and then um, to, to top off a really bad year, uh, someone stole a safe with his life savings in it. I mean, it, it just, it doesn't really get any worse than that, I don't think. So, um, if you can make... I should write a book. It may be, may be. So, folks, uh, uh, you know, uh, to make it easier for you, uh, Langlois is Langlois for a lot of people, L-A-N-G-L-O-I-S, Brian Langlois Relief Fund, any Haverhill Bank branch. So, and, and if, it's, if, it's even, if it's easier for you, uh, drop something off at the station to the Brian Langlois Relief Fund. We'll make sure uh, it gets into the bank. Anything that will make it easy for you, but keep, you know, keep that in mind. Uh, so, the Brian's faced a, a, a dead end. They've received some conflicting information about uh, where the case stood, but now, a year later, uh, yeah, well, I would say Brian has lost hope. Um, I've almost lost hope. Somehow I, I just think that people don't get away with these things. There's always some... Uh, here's a good example of this, if you don't mind my digressing. Uh, WHAV published uh, on its website, because radio doesn't have pictures yet. I think that's called television. I don't think it's been invented yet. Uh, but, um, <laughs> but we uh, published uh, uh, surveillance photographs of a uh, of a man in the police reports last week um, had threatened someone with a hypodermic needle threatened oh, a yeah. threatened a store clerk 
and a WHAV uh, listener and obviously reader of the website correctly identified the man, or at least so far, because uh, police uh, uh, got this man extradited from New Hampshire by United States Marshals. And uh, here's news you won't hear anywhere else. You heard it first on WHAV. Uh, he did uh, return to Haverhill today. He was arraigned uh, and held for a dangerousness hearing. So this is how uh, people do know there's someone else who knows this story, who knows the identity of the man or woman who stole the safe. Someone does know, and uh, we just need them to pick up the phone. Uh, and matter of fact, you don't even have to pick up the phone. If you if you have the web, the police have an anonymous um, tip area on their website. So you know, and I, I also on their telephone system. And their telephone system. Good point, Brian. So you know, um, and uh, the woman who uh, sent uh, the lead. Uh, I guess I gave, gave away at least the gender, but she um, she uh, sent it to WHAV and we forwarded it off to police, and it turned out uh, she was uh, she was correct. Uh, at least as, as police believe that she is. Obviously, the man will face uh, trial. But, you know, I'm hoping something like that will happen. Uh, someone knows. Someone does know. And you can do it anonymously. I mean, we're going to try to make you feel as guilty as possible tonight. So uh, if you know, you know someone who you think or could have or might have been the one who stole the safe, like you just, you realized one day the person didn't have enough money for a candy bar, and the next day there was a safe in the back of their car filled with $30,000, uh, that might be a good lead for police. So, uh, Well, I wonder, too, like uh, a person associated with the uh, people of interest, too, you know, and then establishing probable cause and, uh, and that kind of thing. So. Well, Brian, we'll, um, we'll uh, you know, we'll talk it up. I'm, I'm getting discouraged. Uh, but I know you're way beyond that, uh, but I, I still think that someone w can come forward. And, you know, uh, if, if those of you who are listening and watching and you have no clue necessarily who this might be, ask your friends and neighbors, someone at the restaurant you go to, uh, because someone knows who this is. People do not, uh, I, I hate to say it, that I think some criminals are egotistical. They'll tell 10 people. Well, some people brag. I mean, in most cases, you're right. Police uh, police arrest people because they were bragging about their crime someplace. Uh, and if you see the person who stole WHAV sign, that's another story. <laughs> we, we, we have a whole list for you folks. <laughs> yeah, I'll give you a list of things to look for. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like a scavenger hunt of crime. And I guess I shouldn't be laughing at that, but I guess I'm, uh, you know, when sometimes when you're kind of down about these things, you try to make light of it to uh, lift yourself up. But all right, Brian, I really do uh, appreciate the update on your case, and I, I'm still hoping some WHAV viewer or listener or reader of the website will come forward and um, just provide the lead. You know, listen, you don't have to worry about whether you're right or wrong. Uh, police will do the, the work from there. They'll check it out. And um, uh, Brian worries that they might not, but I, I, I think that, they, that they'll at least give it a good try. Well, they're not talking to me, really. But, uh. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, hopefully, hopefully we'll see improvements in all areas. So, uh, Brian, thank you very much for your call. Okay, Tim. Yeah, stay tuned, uh, Brian, though. We have uh, some good guests coming up to uh, discuss uh, Asperger Works Dinner of Hope with a keynote address by Senator Barbara Italian, who will herself be introduced by Lawrence Mayor Dan Rivera Friday, October 2nd, uh -huh. 630 to 1130 at the Elks Lodge in Lawrence. That's an interesting uh, disease, too, because uh, I know my sister-in-law used to work with... Uh, uh, people who've been diagnosed with Asperger's and uh, you know and I suspect we have some people lots of people right here in Haverhill with that oh no I, I think it's more common than anyone would realize in fact uh, degrees. And Steve Jobs oh Steve Jobs from uh, late C I don't know for sure I mean even Bill Gates said that he had that uh, to uh, a small degree and, uh, no, I, 
Yeah, actually, uh, very, very intelligent people. Uh, Steve Jobs, oh, yeah. Bill Gates. And um, so, yeah, a very good, a great teaser for our, our interview. And then coming up at 7.30 or so, maybe 7.35 since I'm late going to news, uh, David Goudswood will be joining us to discuss Snowbound with Zombies, Tales of the Supernatural. So, Brian, uh, maybe we can take your mind off things with our entertainment tonight. Sure enough. <laughs> All right, thank you, Brian. You have a good evening. Good night. Thank you. Goodbye. All right, we're going to go to local news with news director Dana Esmo for the latest on the uh, Stephen Street fire. And um, is that phone patch still on? Because I can't hear anything all of a sudden. All right, uh, we're going to go to the latest local news. Dana will tell us what Fire Chief Paro said, the, said this afternoon. And then we'll have uh, national news with Rebecca Foster, and we'll be back with more of the Open Mic Show. Open Mic! Tim Coco and the Open Mic will be right back. Get in on the action. Call 978-374-1900 or email tcoco at whav.net. If you are enjoying this program, please consider making a donation right now. Your donations to not-for-profit WHAV help keep these vital community services on the air. Donate online at www.whav.net. It's 7.05. WHAV LP Haverhill. WHAV is a nonprofit community service of Public Media of New England, Incorporated. Here's what's happening in local news. Relief crews stepped in by Monday afternoon for Haverhill area firefighters as containment and cleanup efforts at the 1430 Stephen Street Mill building fire scene continue into the evening. Fresh crews from as close as Andover and as far as the town of Ayer are working to contain a few remaining hot spots from Sunday's 7 alarm blaze in relief for Haverhill firefighters, according to interim Haverhill Fire Chief John Paro. When the floors come down, fire gets sandwiched in between the floors, so we're trying to... Uh Dig that out with high-pressure uh, hose lines. And uh, we <clears throat> brought in some fresh crews from out, outside of Essex County. We brought in crews from Ayer, Littleton, Andover, and Chelmsford to um, allow the city of Haverhill to take their apparatus back to the respective stations and get them back in service. They were pretty much depleted uh, after you know, fighting the fire all night. And while traffic through Lafayette Square between Essex Street and the intersection of Broadway and Hilldale Avenue was restored this morning, Paro said he expects a street closure on Winter Street leading into Lafayette Square to remain at least until the evening commute. All the heavy hose is, is off the street, but it's just um, <clears throat> where everybody's still working out there. It's still a, you know, a, a dangerous area. Thank God for mutual aid companies. We had uh, 19 different towns in uh, last night, and some of them sent multiple pieces of apparatus. So we probably had a 100, 125 firefighters on scene. The blaze destroyed the former site of Hudson Machinery Company and brought mutual aid from such area communities as Amesbury, Andover, Atkinson, Lawrence, Methuen, Plastow, and West Newberry. Haverhill firefighters battled the blaze from both sides of Little River. Other fire departments covered Haverhill fire stations. No injuries were reported, and a cause of the fire remains unknown at this time. The state fire marshal has been at the scene assisting Haverhill Fire Investigators, Paro said. More details can be found at whav.net. Haverhill police have been asked to investigate an alleged, quote, irregularity involving a Haverhill Public Schools account for student activities at the high school. According to Haverhill Superintendent of Schools James F. Scully, an unnamed department employee was placed on paid administrative leave Thursday while the matter was referred to Haverhill Police, who began an investigation Friday. He told WHAV Monday, quote, a routine practice was followed after there appeared to have been, quote, an error or misjudgment on someone's part, end quote. When we get notified or learn of such um, actions, what we normally do is we uh, employ an outside audit team, which has a fraud unit attached to it, and we review all accounts, whatever facility that, uh, such a, a transgression occurs in, in this case, it would be all in concert here with high school. Scully would not comment as to how the, quote, irregularity was discovered, but he said it is not the first time the school department has faced such an event and it, quote, will deal with it, end quote. It's unfortunate that these things happen, but they do. 
and um, people, for whatever reason, um, don't use proper judgment and make decisions that uh, they shouldn't make, and as a result, you have to deal with them. Scully said a dollar amount involved was unknown pending a completed review of the high school accounts. A Haverhill police spokesperson was unavailable for comment. A longtime, quote, voice of the Merrimack Valley is silent. Bruce Arnold Salvucci, 79, of Swampscott, died Saturday at Grosvenor Park Health Center, Salem. The longtime WCCM radio morning host and 2010 inductee into the Massachusetts Broadcasters Hall of Fame was born in Lynn. He was a 1953 graduate of Lynn English High School and Graham Junior College School of Radio and TV. He began his radio career in 1955 at WJWG in Conway, New Hampshire. He served in the Army from 1956 to 1959. While in the Army, he continued his broadcasting career with Armed Forces Radio and Television. In 1957, he was sent to Eniwetok in the Marshall Islands, an atomic bomb test site, part of Operation Hardtack. The last year of his Army service was completed in 1959 at the Army Pictorial Center in Long Island, New York, producing, directing, and sometimes acting in TV and motion picture Army training films. In October 1959, he joined WCCM Lawrence, beginning a career that would span more than 50 years. He also occasionally worked at WHIL and WBZ, where he was the regular fill-in host for Larry Glick and Bob Raleigh. In 1996, he played a vital role in bringing Haverhill's Bill Pike on the open mic back to radio. The segment, part of a larger program called Haverhill Today, aired on WCCM Sunday mornings until a revived WHAV could be launched. He will be inducted posthumously into the Lynn English High School Hall of Fame. Visiting hours at Catadella Funeral Home, 126 Pleasant Valley Street, Methuen, are Wednesday, September 23rd from 2 to 5 and 7 to 9 p.m. A funeral mass will take place Thursday, September 24 at 10.30 a.m. at Corpus Christi Parish at Holy Rosary Church, 35 Essex Street, Lawrence. Burial will follow at the Immaculate Conception Cemetery in Lawrence. Donations may be made to the Bruce Arnold Memorial Scholarship Fund, carer of St. Alfio Society, 20 Common Street, Lawrence, Massachusetts, 01840. More details can be found at whav.net. In local high school sports, the Whittier Tech Wildcats are in action Monday afternoon as girls' junior varsity and varsity volleyball teams host Northeast Regional. Boys' junior varsity football plays host to Greater Lowell Tech, and boys' junior varsity soccer travels to Shawsheen Tech. More scheduled details at whav.net. Remember, WHAV is the only Haverhill-based news source, and it's always free. In the Edwin V. Johnson Newsroom, this is Dana Esmail. From Feature Story News in Washington, I'm Rebecca Foster. Hungary has passed a law to allow the army to deploy against refugees and migrants in order to handle the crisis. Thousands of people trying to reach the European Union have been refused entry into Hungary since the country closed its border with Serbia, causing violent clashes with police. Our Europe correspondent Jack Perak reports. The new Hungarian law states the government can authorize the army to use non-lethal force against anyone attempting to cross the razor wire fence they've erected on their border. This includes the use of tear gas and rubber bullets. The move comes as foreign ministers from Poland, Hungary, the Czech Republic and Slovakia meet in Prague. Those countries are opposing a quota system to distribute asylum seekers across the European Union. That system is set to be the focus of an EU ministers meeting Tuesday and an emergency summit of EU leaders on Wednesday. Jack Parrick, Brussels. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu met with Russia's President Vladimir Putin in Moscow on Monday, discussing the latest developments in Syria and the Middle East. The talks came after U.S. officials released pictures of Russian fighter jets and helicopters in Syria. Anya Ardaiva reports from Moscow. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was reportedly accompanied by two top Israeli generals on his brief visit to Moscow. He sought reassurance and cooperation from Russia amid new reports of Russian military buildup in Syria. Following the meeting, Russian President Vladimir Putin condemned the recent shelling of Israeli territory and assured Benjamin Netanyahu that Syria is unable to start a military action against Israel. Israeli Prime Minister said it was important to clarify Israel's position and to do everything to avoid misconceptions between Russian and Israel. 
Israeli forces in the war-torn region. His visit came after U.S. officials said on Friday that Russia had deployed four Suhoi fighter jets and eight Russian helicopters to an airbase near the city of Latakia. Anya Daiva, Moscow. German car manufacturer Volkswagen has apologized for high pollution levels released from some of its vehicles. This comes after regulators in the U.S. accused the company of installing a defeat device in order to pass emissions tests. Lorna Shattuck has more. After already recalling some 482,000 vehicles, Volkswagen now faces fines that could reach up to $18 billion. The Environmental Protection Agency in the U.S. found the so-called defeat device in various VW diesel models, including the Audi A3, Golf and Beetle, is used to make vehicles appear more efficient than they actually are. It's a major blow for Volkswagen, who became the world's top-selling automaker this year after overtaking Toyota for the title. Volkswagen's chief executive, Martin Winterkorn, has has now apologized for the scandal and promised an external investigation. Lorna Shaddock, New York. From bureaus worldwide, this is FSN. Wave weather! I'm WHAV meteorologist Gary Best with Wave Weather. Some occasional cloudiness moving into the Merrimack Valley during the night. Low temperatures, upper 40s to low 50s. During the day Tuesday, partial sunshine and 65 to 70. Partly cloudy on Tuesday night. Low temperatures no lower than the low 50s then. And Wednesday and Thursday, mostly sunny skies up between 70 and 75. This is Gary Best. Your next Wave Weather coming up in 30 minutes. WHAV will soon be on FM radio, but only with your help. Help make waves and bring local news to FM by donating at WHAV.net. Just look for the photograph of Tom Bergeron, Honorary Chairperson. Stay informed each day with local news, coupled with FSN's worldwide coverage. WHAV LP Haverhill, the only Haverhill-based news source, and it's always free. Catch the wave, WHAV. From the Edwin B. Johnson Newsroom, WHAV presents the Open Mic Show with Tim Coco. Make your voice heard. Call 978-374-1900. That's 978-374-1900. Or email tcoco at whav.net. Welcome back to the Open Mic Show. This hour of Open Mic being brought to you by Haverhill Bank. Just one bank. Uh, and Chris, if you could adjust the camera as soon as you can. Uh, Lisa's <laughs> kind of off to one end. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't <laughs> mind. All right. But in any event, uh, joining us in the studio uh, to my immediate left, uh, Eva Rychek. I have a oh. cheat note tonight. And Lisa Rychek. Is that right? Perfect. Correct. All right. So they're here to talk about an upcoming event uh, for... Uh, in support of Asperger Works. Asperger Works. Mm -hmm. Putting autism to work. Uh, this is an event that takes place very very soon, Friday, October 2nd. And it's called the Dinner of Hope. Uh, which, the first, uh, you know, that, that title stands out. What, what hope are we looking for? We're hoping that people on the spectrum, adults, as, as, uh, because uh, our concentration is adults uh, on the spectrum, uh, we'll be able to find jobs that are, uh, I always use this word, commensurate with their talents, their intellect, which uh, they, right now, many of them um, don't have. They don't get jobs like that if they get a job, and most of them are unemployed. So the fact that you're targeting adults, I'm assuming that you recognized a while back, and I have to admit that a little that I know, I, it seems to me I'm not aware of any programs for adults. There's been a lot of attention on school-age children and so on, mm -hmm. but uh, I have uh, several experiences uh, as an employer with employees, with people on the spectrum over the years, and many of them... Uh, are of an age where 
this wasn't something that schools even thought about or looked for 35, 40 years ago. So it's, it seems like a service that's incredibly important for adults. And this is the thing, <coughs> excuse me, um, that people, um, like my son, who was the founder of this organization, was diagnosed with learning disability. But nobody, they did not help him. He was just a, a statistic. And nobody knew how to help him. And today, and I think he told us that that's just kind of a catch-all term. Too. Yeah, absolutely. They they just dumped everybody into that basket, so to speak. And uh, and even today, um, there are a lot of um, help for people on the lower end of the spectrum, uh, whether they're children or adults. Uh, the spectrum is now recognized. Asperger's is recognized in schools, and kids are being helped, mostly male. And that's what she, uh, Lisa wanted to tell you about. That girls are. Go ahead. Um, unfortunately, um, girls are not being um, diagnosed because from li from early on, they're they are um, naturally raised to be more social. So they're socialized, and they learn to be social at a younger age, whereas boys are not so. So it's hard to depict the uh, characteristics. So, so they overlook they girls basically altogether. overlook all girls altogether, mm -hmm. and that's an issue also because the and oftentimes they are mixed diagnosed too. In fact, that they have Asperger's syndrome, but they're misdiagnosed with a learning disability like dyslexia. And also misdiagnosed to have a mental illness like bipolar when initially they have Asperger's syndrome. But unfortunately, because as I mentioned that they're social, very social, they tend to put it almost like under the table. Funny, what you're saying actually kind of describes uh, some maybe larger societal issues about the roles we assign to boys and girls. Exactly. Why don't we pick up with that? We have to take a brief break for a community spotlight, and then we'll come back. Uh, folks, we'll be back with more of the Open Mic Show. Learn more about the Dinner of Hope on Friday, October 2nd. We'll be right back. Open Mic! Tim Coco and the Open Mic will be right back. Get in on the action. Call 978-374-1900 or email tcoco at whav.net. If you are enjoying this program, please consider making a donation right now. Your donations to not-for-profit WHAV help keep these vital community services on the air. Donate online at www.whav.net. WHAV is the only FM station assigned to the city of Haverhill. The sooner you contribute at WHAV.net, the sooner WHAV signs on at 97.9 FM. Just look for the photograph of Tom Bergeron, honorary chairperson of WHAV's Make Waves campaign. Community Spotlight is brought to you by Haverhill Bank. Haverhill Bank is a generous supporter of the area's civic and cultural program. Spotlight. The Merrimack Valley Chamber of Commerce is having its annual dinner Wednesday, October 7th, beginning at 6. The event takes place at De Burroughs, 887 Boston Road, Haverhill. The annual dinner is a celebration and recognition of members and their work of the Chamber. The Ralph B. Wilkinson Award, Community Spirit Award, and Service Club Volunteer Award will be presented. The ticket price is $125 per person or $1,250 per table. Someone you know is on WHAV. To submit or read your own nonprofit announcements, click on the contact tab at whav.net or email news at whav.net. In the Edwin V. Johnson Newsroom, this is Maddie Karen. From the Edwin B. Johnson Newsroom, WHAV presents the Open Mic Show with Tim Coco. 
Make your voice heard. Call 978-374-1900. That's 978-374-1900. Or email tcoco at whav.net. Welcome back to the Open Mic Show. This hour of Open Mic being brought to you by Haverhill Bank. Just one bank. We're here with Eva and Lisa Rychik, and we're talking about Asperger's. But more importantly, we're talking about a dinner of hope. Now, very likely, yourself, a family member, maybe a grandchild, a grandchild um, has been told, oh, they have bipolar or, or a learning disability uh, or some catch-all like that. And what we're learning tonight from our guests is that they may very well be on the autism spectrum. Um, and maybe that's a good place to just to, to spend a couple of minutes what is the autism spectrum? Uh, it sounds like there's a range of... It goes from highly intellect to lower intellect, and we're focusing mainly on the higher intellect because they have a lot of services for the lower intellect, uh, developmental, but on the higher end, there's hardly any services out there for adults, and that's why we. That's why my brother, Daniel Reichick, who I'm very proud of, who's my brother and I love him dearly, decided to start this nonprofit because there are not many services out there and and, we're, and, they're, and people are not aware and, our, and we would like to provide services and educate the employer so they learn to work with people who are on the spectrum because oftentimes they have like quirky mannerisms they don't realize that they're ha that they have it and they oftentimes get get um they miss Mis they misinterpret that behavior or the disorganizationals that they're not aware of it so they can't fix it and our job is to educate the communities as well as the employers and the employees so they can work with them because they're one of the best workers that you can think of hiring they're loyal they're dependable they're hardworking they're very intelligent and they're a lot of them are focused on one area usually but my brother has multiple areas that he has focuses on but please you know this well, is let me ask you this i have here's an example and you tell me uh, if this is routine or, uh, common or uncommon um some time ago uh, i had an employee at my company who um clearly was genius i mean genius material uh could do things uh, faster and with, and with much more skill than almost anyone I know. But what I learned is that as an employer, I had to communicate the instructions just a little bit differently than I might otherwise. Frankly, it came down to making a list and, and in a certain order. Mm -hmm. And then this person just took off. Uh, that just uh, making this small, uh, a, a, you know, small adaption to the way I would work uh, meant that the company benefited greatly. Is this a common yeah, situation? Yeah, it's common because they process the information a little bit differently. So sometimes you have to use a visual aid, verbal repetition, like repeat direction. Sometimes it varies depending on the person. Yeah, because one of the major problems they have is organizational, lack of organizational skills. So when you wrote down the list, you organized and that's all it took. And that's all. And it that's took. a part of a component. Many oftentimes, when people are diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome, they're also d diagnosed with ADHD. Doesn't mean that they're hyperactivity. It means that they have organizational issues, and they're not aware of it, so they don't know how to fix it. All right. And they want to know. I mean, they want to be organized. They don't know how to be. They're not. Sometimes they don't. They're not aware of their personal space, and that's why oftentimes when they they get right up for a messy desk, it's not because they want to be messy. They're not aware of their personal surroundings. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I'm just making yeah. you write something I shouldn't. But anyway, okay. no. But it's uh, but you know she's right about this. But there's also. Uh, the other part of it that uh, people don't usually talk about, it, a large number of Aspies, as they call themselves. Um, what one? Aspies. Aspies, okay. Yeah. yeah. A lot of them uh, have problems at work because of the pressures that are put on them. If uh, you allow an Aspie to do the job that he's hired to do, and um, you don't interfere, the person is going to succeed. 
But the minute that pressure is being um, attached to, and you know how usually in they often have like men meltdowns. And yeah, so that yeah. and then when they have the meltdown, that's when they lose their job. I see. Actually, I, I can think of a few days most of us have had meltdowns, so I hope I hope that uh, employers are more tolerant, but that's part of what you're trying to achieve with Asperger Works. Yeah. Now, let's, let's talk about the event. So, folks, we've given you some information, and I perhaps you have a family member right now that you can think of that perhaps is even undiagnosed, that you're saying, wait a minute, that sounds just like so-and-so. So this is why your help is needed. And so there is a Dinner of Hope taking place Friday, October 2nd, between 6.30 and 11.30. Senator Barbara Letalian, who is no stranger to Haverhill, because she was once a, one of our state reps, uh, is going to be the keynote speaker. Uh, tell us about the Dinner of Hope. Well, we, um, <laughs> we desperately need money. So we thought that this may be a nice way to get what we want and at the same time provide people with uh, lots of fun things besides um, Barbara. There's going to be, we're, we hired a DJ for music and dancing. Music and dancing? That's yes. Plus, okay. Yes. The, the, the place, the organization is called the Beat Away Entertainment. I don't know if anybody has heard of them, but supposedly they're, you know, it's a really good DJ. What's it? It's a DJ is called? Uh, a Beat Away. A Beat Away. Okay. Entertainment. All right. And we're going to have a, a wonderful lady. Her, her name is Stephanie Beach. She's a magician. A magician. Oh, and she's fantastic. And she offered to do the whole act. Um, for free. Wonderful, wonderful. And she's, uh, so, and she's, I haven't seen him, but the rest of the crew has. And oh, they, they I mean, this woman is amazing. You, by the end of the show, you're like, how did she do that? <laughs> yeah, right. she's right. amazing. Right. She's good with kids, with adults. She's just a natural. And right. uh, we're also going to be honoring, um, a former student of mine. Okay. Um, because of whom, um, and um, we have discussed this, you, as you and I, before this, that uh, without him, I don't think I would have been as successful a parent or as successful a teacher or basically a, as successful a human being because he was um, an incredible person who despite all his um, disabilities and um, from what I understand, and I never knew about this until I spoke with her mo his mother, um, he had heart disease from the day that he was born and they didn't even expect him to live longer than a couple of years. Oh my goodness, heart and, disease, um, okay. He just uh, died uh, last December at the age of 46. My goodness, 46. And, um, you know, he was a good friend of mine, and it's strange for people to say. He was know, like, I, you know, I looked was. at him like a big brother. I mean, he was that amazing. He was just a special person. Well, and you raise a good point. Um, I, I, I neglected to get uh, to tell listeners about your background. Just just a couple a couple of seconds here. So Eva, uh, you're recently retired, is that right? Well, more than recently, but I don't feel like I'm retired. <laughs> well, you're so busy, <laughs> busier than I am. So I didn't think it was like more than an hour she's been retired. But no, uh, and, <laughs> and I, to, uh, 2005, I retired from uh, education. I was a teacher for 17 years. Um, at Lawrence High School, I taught math and computers. Lawrence! And Sorry. then um, I s spent five years at Methuen High teaching computers and the math. Wow. And then I <coughs> semi-retired and went to teach part-time teachers oh, okay. at uh, Essex Aggie. Essex Agricultural, okay. Two years of that, and then after that, I said, that's it, finished, no more. <laughs> All right. So to attend the dinner, it's uh, $50 per person or $85 per couple. So a that's real right. deal, real deal if uh, you, you go in pairs, $85 per couple. And we don't care what that couple entails. You don't have to be married. You don't have to be girlfriend, boyfriend, boyfriend, boyfriend. Just show up in twos. Just exactly. show up in twos. <laughs> and please... Donate. It's a great cause, and we would like to provide services. So please 
make a donation. It's really for a great cause. Thank you. What a good pitch. <laughs> All right, so uh, this is a Dinner of Hope, Friday, October 2nd, 630 to 1130 p.m. It's going to be at the Elks Lodge. 652 Andover Street, Lawrence. But you know, you don't even have to remember all of that. Uh, what's an easy way they can get in from, uh, people can get information and I'm sure you can mail them this forthcoming invitation. Yes, we're all going right. to do that, <laughs> but we can also, um, they can just come to our website, aspergerworks.org, and um, they can go directly to the, uh, the page, Dinner of Hope, by um, going to aspergerworks.org slash dinner dash of dash hope um, but even just going directly to aspergerworks.org they will be able to get all the information how to order it online how to order they, their uh, tickets um, uh, by mail. Facebook. They can go on Facebook. I mean we are all over the place and we just really hope that people will show up and um, it's yeah. for a really good cause. What we'll try to do is put this information on screen later in the broadcast to make it easier. Uh, I'm just bringing up something to make sure I mm -hmm. do that. All right, so we'll, uh, we'll put something on screen for those of you watching on television, but generally just remember, uh, go to ASP, A -S -P, aspergerworks.org and you can find information about the Dinner of Hope. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, so please donate once again. <laughs> you can visit our website, asipworkworks.org, and um, there's a lot of great, useful information there. So please come to our dinner. It's going to be lots of fun. Show your support for a great cause. We'll be greatly appreciated. Thank you. I could not have said it better myself, <laughs> so thank you very much. All right, folks, uh, those of you watching on television or WHAV.TV, uh, we're going to flash this information on the screen a little bit later. Uh, Chris is going to remind me, and I'm going to give him the graphic. <laughs> Sorry, and, and I'm now, nervous. No, no, you're per doing perfect, perfect. Okay. Um, I think you have a career as a pitch person, <laughs> you know, selling soaps and all kinds of things. Really? You know? <laughs> <Yes>. Great. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we'll put that online. I really I want to thank our guests, Eva and Lisa. I'm going to keep checking my notes. Right check. Uh, on, um, I'm going to save that now. <laughs> I, I don't think I've said it right in, 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 I don't know, how many years have I known you now? A so long time. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we'll, we'll get that done. But it's really a great cause, ladies and gentlemen. And lots of people uh, from the Merrimack Valley that you undoubtedly know are going to be there. Lots of Haverhill people and uh, Lawrence people. And Lawrence people and so on. Uh, get us on Lawrence Sorry. Cable TV and we'll say Lawrence more often. All right. Yes, I will definitely. <laughs> <laughs> do that. This is a great radio See, station. And because because she, uh, we know that she can pitch something good, I, I know she'll get it done. Too. Thank, thank <laughs> Definitely. You. Thank you very much. So uh, good luck at the event. Thank Next you. week, uh, ladies and gentlemen, by the way, we're going to hear a little bit more because... Uh, Senator Barbara Italian is actually going to be on the open mic next Monday night, oh, and will be able to uh, tell us uh, not only about what she's what she's doing in this area, but she has some personal experiences in this regard, and I'm mm -hmm. sure she'll share those with us as well. So right now we're going to take a, a brief break for weather. And by the way, I think Dave and Paul called us and for some reason we're not hearing one of our lines so uh, Dave or Paul um Chris, our producer, is going to, to call you back and try to get you on the air. Uh, and then we're also going to have another Dave, Dave Gowswood, coming on <laughs> shortly to talk about Snowbound with Zombies Ooh. this Saturday. This Saturday. See, she can do sound effects, too. This, <laughs> this Saturday at Whittier Birthplace. All right, let's go to weather. We'll be back with more of the Open Mic Show in just a minute. Open Mic! Tim Coco and the Open Mic will be right back. Get in on the action. Call 978-374-1900 or email tcoco at whav.net. If you are enjoying this program, please consider making a donation right now. Your donations to not-for-profit WHAV help keep these vital community services on the air. Donate online at www.whav.net. It's 738. 
Those Boston stations don't always understand weather in the Merrimack Valley. Stay informed with Wave Weather every 30 minutes, 24 hours a day on Soft Gold WHAV. Catch the wave! You've been told everyone can succeed if they just put in the effort. You're doing that, working more than one job, but you still find yourself falling further behind. What happened? This is Professor Richard Wolf. My weekly economic update puts your struggle in perspective. It discusses the forces holding you back and what you can do about it. Listen Friday nights at 7 p.m. right here on WHAV. WHAV is the only Haverhill-based news source, and it's always free. Wave weather! I'm WHAV meteorologist Gary Best with Wave Weather. Some occasional cloudiness moving into the Merrimack Valley during the night. Low temperatures, upper 40s to low 50s. During the day Tuesday, partial sunshine and 65 to 70. Partly cloudy on Tuesday night. Low temperatures no lower than the low 50s then. And Wednesday and Thursday, mostly sunny skies up between 70 and 75. This is Gary Best. Your next Wave Weather coming up in 30 minutes. From the Edwin B. Johnson Newsroom, WHAV presents the Open Mic Show with Tim Coco. Make your voice heard. Call 978-374-1900. That's 978-374-1900. Or email tcoco at whav.net. Welcome back to the Open Mic Show. Last hour was brought to us by Haverhill Bank, just one bank. And now the next hour of the Open Mic Show being brought to us by the Merrimack Valley Economic Development Council. Smart companies choose the Merrimack Valley. All right, I'm going to be sending Chris a file because I said I would put this on air. So let's see if I can do two things at once. Um, Apparently not well. Uh, I'm going to ask Chris to do one thing, though. Uh, I gave you uh, two callers who called us. If you could call one of them, uh, just one for now, and then we'll get David Goudswood on the air. What? Which one would you like first? Uh, in the order I gave it to you. How's that? So order that the calls came in. Right. And then uh, then we'll um, talk to David Goudswood. Oh, we have a call coming in. Maybe that's one of them now. Except Chris walked out of the room. Oh, I don't know what that's all about. All right, so we can do that. All right, let's uh, let's try to put this in the right folder, folks. I'm uh, trying to use a computer at the same time uh, so far. Okay, there is a, a file, Chris, called Capture in the TV graphics folder. If you can put that on the screen for our viewers to learn more about the Dinner of Hope Friday, October 2nd at the Elks Lodge in Lawrence. You can learn more at ASP, A-S-P-E-R-G-E-R, -E Asperger Works, one word, dot org. Okay, all right. Um, when, during this, this couple of seconds, there's some other topics you may be interested in tonight, folks. You've probably heard some of this on the news. Um, special tribute to what most people know him as Bruce Arnold. His given name is Bruce Arnold Salvucci, longtime WCCM radio host. And many of you uh, may even remember him on uh, WHIL, which became KISS 108, and WBZ, where he filled in for Larry Glick and Bob Raleigh. So uh, he passed away. Uh, to, it's a great loss uh, to the radio world. I, I'll tell you that I uh, met, um, although I heard him for many years, I met Bruce in 1996. And some of you might remember this. Um, before we were able to launch the new WHAV, we bought time on WCCM, and we returned the open mic show to the air uh, on Sunday mornings. And Bill Pike was still with us then, and Bill Pike uh, came back and did Bill Pike on the open mic Sunday mornings at WCCM back in 1996. And uh, Bruce uh, really paved the way also, um, you know, there, there are many other people at the time uh, who 
played some some key roles in making sure that uh, the show went on but Bruce was one of the top ones and really promoted it and uh, we do mourn his loss those of you who are interested uh, the visiting hours at the Cotadella uh, Funeral Home 126 Pleasant Valley Street in Methuen it's Wednesday September 23rd from 2 to 5 and 7 to 9 p.m. Uh, the funeral takes place Thursday September 24th at uh, 1030 at Corpus Christi Paris at Holy Rosary Church in Lawrence and then um, there's also a scholarship fund you can donate to the Bruce Arnold Memorial Scholarship Fund, care of St. Alfio Society, 20 Common Street in Lawrence. So that, that's another item. Okay, um, oh, so David called in. All right, so uh, we'll get the other. Uh, well, uh, those of you who call, we'll also uh, try to work you in as soon as possible. 118. Yes. Uh, 118. All right. Well, let me uh, take. Let me take David. For David, are you with us? No, he's not. No, right. he should be. I uh, just transferred it. Oh, he was on that line. Yeah. Uh, David, how'd you get on that line? We need to find out how people are getting on these lines. <laughs> Is he there? No, he's not there. Well, I it's Flash. Uh. All right. So, all right. So this is uh, what was called dead air in radio. It's uh, frowned upon greatly. Uh, so I'll keep talking. Uh, but again, uh, also uh, hope to hear from some of you later. Talk about uh, maybe your observations of the fire. All right. I think we have now David Gowser. You are on the open mic. Oh, don't you love live radio? Yes. Well, that's how it works. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to figure out how we have deadlines. There's uh, some line that's not working here, and we'll have to, to contact the phone folks about that. But, okay, we got you in. All well, right, well, you David. Know, blame the manager or the blame the producer. Take your pick. Uh, one of us, yes, okay. All right. <laughs> All right, uh, those of you watching on uh, television and uh, on radio, I'll describe it. There's a kind of a artist interpretation of of Whittier birthplace in Haverhill and the book is called Snowbound with Zombies and Tales of the Supernatural. Now David has told us some things about this but he has some updated information now. Uh, they will be, there will be 10 authors, 10 authors at Whittier birthplace this Saturday between 1 and 3. David you want to tell us something about uh, the authors and and what their interest is in uh, contributing to this book. They were paid the, the hearty sum of zero, I understand. Yes, some of them got paid twice. It was so high. <laughs> so, uh, and, and some of them are traveling great distances just to be here uh, to, uh, to autograph some books. So, David, tell us something about that. Well, most of the people who are coming, in fact, I think all of them, I'd have to check, are members of the New England Horror Writers Association, which is a very loose-knit group of people who more or less are run by my brother, which is very convenient when you're looking for authors who you know have a certain level of talent. Um, That's these right. people were all invited to join the book. Um, this was not open submission, so I didn't have to sit through three, four, five hundred bad stories to find two or three good ones. I knew who these people were, I've read their work, I liked their work, and I thought they were a good fit for the style and the tone of the book. All right, and then um, if, it's, if it's easy for you, if you have your notes handy, can you name those ten authors that are coming Saturday? Funny you should say that because I am desperately trying to pull up my file as we speak because it is, after all, live radio. That's right. Well, that's how it works. Well, in any event, uh, folks, uh, you might find this interesting because there's some parts of the birthplace that will be open uh, that you may not have seen before. Uh, first, uh, the uh, carriage shed. Now, many of you say, oh, yeah, well, I've seen the carriage shed, those of you who have been there, but no, you haven't seen it lately. Uh, students at Whittier Regional Vocational Technical High School have just, from top to bottom, uh, renovated the shed. And why is that so great? Because they also built the shed many years ago. So another generation of Whittier students did a just absolutely top-notch job. Uh, Whittier Birthplace provided and paid for the materials, as you might understand, but the students and their instructors just did a fantastic job. Uh, you'll find uh, there's some new walls, there's uh, 
uh, you know, some new windows, uh, much more comfortable lighting and heating, and that's the carriage shed, and that's, uh, we'll have perhaps refreshments there, and then the big barn, the giant barn, I mean, it's amazing how big it really is, it probably could fit two Whittier birthplaces inside of it, uh, the barn is where uh, we're going to have uh, the authors assemble to, uh, to sign copies of this book, and they're also going to be bringing some of their other popular works for sale. And yeah. it's really a, a great, a great deal because these are, you know, I, there's no book there that costs more than twenty dollars. I, th I don't think. Is that right? To tell you the truth, I don't know what each person's bringing. I asked each to bring two or three copies of different books, so you might it, twenty dollars is probably a good benchmark, but it could go a little higher in some cases. All right, and then probably lower in others. So it's oh, a great, a great time to to buy some stocking stuffers or gifts, birthday gifts, anniversary gifts, and of course we, you can get uh, if you win a cake next week, you'll get just really top it all off with the um, Albie D's second generation Italian bakery cake contest. I guess I've been in radio long enough that I can work in a sponsor any way I can. All right. <laughs> You have been on radio a long time. <laughs> so, well, you can do that, too. All right. By, by the way, is it added treat? And I don't think David knows this either. Uh, now he's, like, starting to shudder in his boots, like a story come to life from the book. Uh, what David doesn't know either is as an added attraction, uh, very interesting, uh, Mr. McCusker, who lives in the neighborhood, is a collector and a and person who restores uh, old carriages. Uh, you know, we're talking about 19th century carriages, all beautifully restored, and they're also going to be dis on display in the barn. And you might find that to be an added treat. And if that doesn't sell it, uh, the event is free to attend. There's free tours, and there'll be free cider and donuts. I mean, what could be better than that, except maybe getting your, your book and having it signed? Yes, all right. that, that's always helpful, too. All right, it, it's a it's a good variety. I wish everybody could come, but uh, well, frankly, the the trustees of the birthplace just didn't feel like flying people in from the West Coast. Go figure. Well, yeah. Well, if they <laughs> could take the carriage, that's another story. But uh, yeah. well, <laughs> that that and the fact that some of the authors are dead and Ouija boards are just not as efficient anymore. All right. So you you can tell us who's coming now, or do I fill some more? No, no, you're doing fine. <laughs> I just I just figured I'd see how far you could go with it. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm uh. going to. They're not in alphabetical order. They're basically in the order that they are in the table of contents because that's how well organized I am. You're going to see John McElveen, a very very popular author who lives in Bradford. No, excuse me, he's in East Haverhill now. Um, spectacular ghost story he wrote about the White Mountains. It's a it's a very nice piece. It fits in perfectly with that gentle ghost story motif that Whittier likes so much. You're going to see my brother Scott, who, along with me, um, we promise not to kill each other while we're there. All bets are off later. Uh, Scott okay. wrote a story based on the new bride in the old which is one of my personal favorites for Whittier. It takes place down in Hampton. It's based loosely on the General Jonathan Moulton story. And then you have Morvin Westfield, who wrote one based on um, the Molly Pitcher clairvoyant story. Um, you have Roxanne Dent and her sister Karen. You want to talk about a couple of stories that are absolutely dichotomy um, I won't mention names because I can't keep track of them any more than I can keep track of my brother and myself. Uh, one of the sisters, Dent, wrote a story that is basically in outer space. It takes place on Mars and then on Earth in the future. And the other sister wrote a Regency piece. So you've got hundreds of years between these two stories, one based on um, the Countess and, more specifically, the Countess's ghost. So All just right. real fun pieces there. You yeah, have long time counsel. open mic show viewers and listeners will remember that we had uh, Roxanne on the program last Christmas, and probably it'd be a good idea to bring her back this year too. Yes, and she did write. She did write a Regency, and she read it on the air. That should give you a hint which sister I'm talking about. Okay, thank you. And we also have Judy Calhoun, who's coming down from the the great wilderness in northern New Hampshire. Fun story on the Witch of Wenham. 
which is actually our, one of the stories. In, in case of people are watching me on television and wondering why my forehead is wrinkling, um, our producer is crawling around on the floor of the control room. I'm assuming he lost something, or maybe he's just going back to childhood. Uh, but <laughs> I, I have had that effect on people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but... Uh, uh. <laughs> Other people are coming up from Connecticut, uh, Christy Peterson Schoonover, who has a story about the beehives. Um, so it's it's a real fun mix. And to tell you the truth, I've never done an anthology quite like this before, where you have such a wide-open theme. It, the theme is it has to be a story based on the life of John Greenleaf Whittier, or it has to be based on a poem uh, by John Greenleaf Whittier. Now, Barefoot Boy is represented, Snowbound is in there, and most people say Snowbound. That's not a ghost story. That's not a supernatural story. Well, yeah, it is. Um, if you read the foreword that Whittier wrote to it, he mentions specifically uh, the medieval alchemist Agrippa, who wrote a three-volume book on um, I'm going to call it alchemy. It's, it sort of crosses the border more into almost a magical tomb. Whittier's mother owned a set of those, and Whittier owned them after her. And he mentions that Agrippa considered a fire to be a representation of life that could take the place of the sun on a dreary day, such as, say, you're snowbound. Oh, okay, and very interesting. You'll see a lot of this fire motif throughout the poem because of that. Uh, hey, David, you can hold that thought right there. Well, you got to work in a uh, movie review this hour, and then we're going to come back, uh, wrap up our discussion of the book. Not to say that I have given up on it. We'll probably have some more comments later. Uh, but um, uh, just, folks, a quick reminder. I'm going to remind you again. But this Saturday, September 26th, Whittier Birthplace, 305 Whittier Road. That's right off Route 110. Uh, there is a there are free tours of Whittier Birthplace, and you'll have a chance to uh, pick up one of these books or several and have them autographed by 10 of the authors uh, who contributed to the book, all original stories by these authors. And I want to add, just for those of you who, um, who maybe need some graphical incentive, it is very well illustrated with photographs. Uh, David, do you know the number of photographs off the top of your head? Well, there are 22 stories, a foreword, an introduction, and an afterward. So each item in the book has a picture. So 25 pictures. 25 pictures. And um, I'll tell you what, when we come back, maybe you'll also tell us um, the name of a, of a uh, former Haverhill person uh, to whom the book is dedicated. Now, well, let's, uh, let's hold it on that. Uh, let's take a, a break for uh, a movie review from our friends at Take Two Movie Review, and then we'll be right back with David Goudswood. Stay with us. Open mic! Tim Coco and the Open Mic will be right back. Get in on the action. Call 978-374-1900 or email tcoco at whav.net. If you are enjoying this program, please consider making a donation right now. Your donations to not-for-profit WHAV help keep these vital community services on the air. Donate online at www.whav.net. This is listener-supported community radio, WHAV. WHAV is the Merrimack Valley's Pacifica affiliate. Smart companies choose the Merrimack Valley. They're attracted by the region's technology and innovation, housing and education, workforce, arts, culture and recreation, and convenient location and easy access. Learn more and look at profiles of all 24 cities and towns at the Merrimack Valley Economic Development Council website at merrimackvalley.info. On air or online, WHAV serves you. All day long, keep up to date with tenacious but objective local reporting from the only Haverhill-based news source. Find out about civic and charitable events on Community Spotlight every quarter hour and better prepare with wave weather heard every 30 minutes. 
For talk, there's Tom Hartman, weekdays at noon, the Open Mic Show every Monday night, and David Pakman, Tuesday through Friday nights. And there's more. Hear classic comedy and drama seven nights a week at 10 p.m. and 1 a.m. Finally, a unique blend of soft gold music radiates day and night. Only local radio can bring you this combination of music, news, and features, but only WHAV does. This is Take Two Movie Review. I'm Kim Lowe. This week, wild on the Appalachian Trail. A Walk in the Woods may be a true story based on the best-selling book by noted travel writer Bill Bryson, but it is not strictly autobiographical. While it's true that Bryson did walk part of the 2,000-mile-plus trail, it happened in the late 90s, and he was only in his 40s at the time. In this adaptation set in the present day, Bryson is a senior citizen played by none other than Robert Redford, who is 17 years older than his real-life counterpart. The movie takes on a different feel from the memoir. Namely, Redford's Bryson knows that this is probably his last opportunity to undertake such an adventure. Despite the reservations expressed by his wife, played by Emma Thompson, in a small but memorable role, he's determined to do it, and joining him on his journey is his old friend Stephen Katz, whom he hasn't seen in 40 years. Katz, played brilliantly by Nick Nolte, isn't the sort of person anyone would think of as a hiker. An overweight, recovering alcoholic who looks like he could barely walk the length of a football field Katz is nonetheless up for the challenge. In addition to having some of the funniest lines in the movie, Nolte's performance gives the viewer an idea of just how challenging the trail is, both physically and mentally. While there isn't a lot of action in the movie, save for a memorable scene involving Katz in a love triangle he gets involved in in a stop off the trail, a walk in the woods is nonetheless fast-paced and entertaining. At one point, Bryson muses how much longer the trail will be there, or at least look the way it does now thanks to environmental change. While a walk in the woods isn't life-changing, it may inspire you to pursue those bucket list items now, while you can. This has been Take Two Movie Review. I'm Kim Lowe. Catch up with us at Take Two moviereview.com and feed us back at youtube.com. Take two movie review. WHAV Open Mic From the Edwin B. Johnson Newsroom, WHAV presents the Open Mic Show with Tim Coco. Make your voice heard. Call 978-374-1900. That's 978-374-1900. Or email tcoco at whav.net. This hour of Open Mic being brought to you by the Merrimack Valley Economic Development Council. Smart companies choose the Merrimack Valley. Okay, I know there are many of you uh, trivia enthusiasts out there because when we have a trivia contest, all the phones light up. So David Gounswood is going to help us. We're going to give away free uh, a copy of Snowbound with Zombies. And uh, the winner will be able to pick it up at the author's event Saturday between 1 and 3 and get it signed. So it's a real deal, free. All you have to do is be the first person to answer this trivia question. And I think uh, some longtime uh, trivia aficionados on the open mic will be able to get this real quickly. Uh, But John Greenleaf Woodier died in New Hampshire in 1892. The house that he was in still exists. But it's no longer in Hampton Falls. Is this another supernatural story? No. Uh, Where is that house located now? Okay, real. Once again, Whittier died in New Hampshire, 1892. The house still exists, but is no longer in Hampton Falls. Where is it now located? Be the first person to answer that question. And we're going to have a book, Snowbound with Zombies, waiting for you uh, at Whittier Birthplace Saturday afternoon. Uh, feel free to call uh, anytime before the end of the program, 978-374-1900. Okay, let's wrap up uh, with David Gounswood right now. Uh, David, you dedicated the book to someone well-known uh, to uh, Haverhill residents. Can you tell us about about that? Well, I don't know about well-known anymore, but I have a great affection for the man, and I've kept in touch with him. I actually worked for him, and it's George Capron. Um, 
for those of you who don't remember George, he was the first executive director of the Haverhill Arts Commission. He was the founding member, member and incorporator, I guess, of the Armory Foundation for the Arts. And he ran a marketing full-service advertising agency in the Casey Building. All right, and you say for George Capron, artist, teacher, mentor, friend. Now, some of you might remember uh, Arlene Capron, George's wife. She was secretary to the mayor of Haverhill at one time. Uh, Ted Pelosi. That's right. Uh, she was secretary to Ted. I believe she was secretary uh, secretary to city council, but then later secretary to Bill Ryan, if I'm Yeah, not. she was the secretary to the council first, and then when Ted was elected mayor, she went with him downstairs. All right. So then, uh, so that's uh, some, some, more, some more background. Lots of Haverhill connections here in this book. So to win the, um, the book, then you'll be able to pick it up at Whittier Birthplace. All you have to do, answer this question. John Greeny of Whittier died in New Hampshire in 1892. The house still exists, but it's no longer located in Hampton Falls. Where is it now located? Uh, David, is there going to be a supernatural answer? Uh, I think it's a shame, but not a supernatural one. And I should point out at this point in time, there are only two copies of that book that have been distributed. One of them is in your sweaty little hands right now. Okay, yes. So I don't know what that says about me giving you one of the two copies of the book before the event, and then you go and try to give it away to somebody. Oh, well, I'm just trying to create a crowd. How's that? <laughs> I, I think I'm hurt. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I have, yeah, I, I'm going to also get another copy for myself because I want to get those autographs. So, Well, uh, there's actually, you can get 12 autographs in the book, the 10 authors. You're going to be there. I'm going to be there. Well, that's right. I do the foreword, by the way. I, see, I, I'm, I'm so bad at shameless self-promotion that I'll now take advantage of the time to promote my foreword to the book. Uh, some some woody aficionados might be surprised at what I actually have to say, so this uh, is another reason you might want to get the book. I think it was perfect. I really do. <laughs> I mean, it, it is so typical of what was going on in Haverhill while we were growing up. Yeah, so that's a good point. All right, we teased you enough, folks. We'll, uh, David, thank you very much for spending some time with us tonight, and we'll see what we get for answers. Yes, and come early next Saturday, because we only have a finite number of books, and once they're gone, all we're going to have left is copies of books like my H.P. Lovecraft in the Merrimack Valley, and slightly different book. I could learn a thing or two about shameless self-promotion from David Goswood. Thank you, David. Talk to you later, Tim. <laughs> Thanks, David. All right, folks, very late for news, but you know that's my record. Yeah, I mean, you'd be surprised if I were on time, wouldn't you be? So, okay, uh, we are going to take a break for an update on uh, last night's fire in Haverhill and some other information. We'll be back after national news and weather with more of the Open Mic Show. Stay tuned. Open Mic! Tim Coco and the Open Mic will be right back. Get in on the action. Call 978-374-1900 or email tcoco at whav.net. If you are enjoying this program, please consider making a donation right now. Your donations to not-for-profit WHAV help keep these vital community services on the air. Donate online at www.whav.net. It's 8.07. WHAV LP Haverhill. WHAV is a nonprofit community service of Public Media of New England, Incorporated. Here's what's happening in local news. Relief crews stepped in by Monday afternoon for Haverhill area firefighters as containment and cleanup efforts at the 1430 Stephen Street Mill building fire scene continue into the evening. Fresh crews from as close as Andover and as far as the town of Ayer are working to contain a few remaining hot spots from Sunday's 7 alarm blaze in relief for Haverhill firefighters, according to Interim Haverhill Fire Chief John Paro. When the floors come down, fire gets sandwiched in between the floors, so we're trying to uh, dig that out with high-pressure uh, hose lines. And uh, we <clears throat> brought in some fresh crews from out outside of Essex County. We brought in crews from Ayer, Littleton, Andover, and Chelmsford to um, allow the city of Haverhill to 
take their apparatus back to the respective stations and get them back in service. They were pretty much depleted uh, after you know, fighting the fire all night. And while traffic through Lafayette Square between Essex Street and the intersection of Broadway and Hilldale Avenue was restored this morning, Paro said he expects a street closure on Winter Street leading into Lafayette Square to remain at least until the evening commute. All the heavy hose is, is off the street, but it's just um, <clears throat> where everybody's still working out there. It's still a, you know, a, a dangerous area. Thank God for mutual aid companies. We had uh, 19 different towns in uh, last night, and some of them sent multiple pieces of apparatus. So we probably had 100, 125 firefighters on scene. The blaze destroyed the former site of Hudson Machinery Company and brought mutual aid from such area communities as Amesbury, Andover, Atkinson, Lawrence, Methuen, Plastow, and West Newberry. Haverhill firefighters battled the blaze from both sides of Little River. Other fire departments covered Haverhill fire stations. No injuries were reported, and a cause of the fire remains unknown at this time. The state fire marshal has been at the scene assisting Haverhill fire investigators, Paro said. More details can be found at whav.net. A longtime, quote, voice of the Merrimack Valley is silent. Bruce Arnold Salvucci, 79, of Swampscott, died Saturday at Grosvenor Park Health Center, Salem. The longtime WCCM radio morning host and 2010 inductee into the Massachusetts Broadcasters Hall of Fame was born in Lynn. He was a 1953 graduate of Lynn English High School and Graham Junior College School of Radio and TV. He began his radio career in 1955 at WJWG in Conway, New Hampshire. He served in the Army from 1956 to 1959. While in the Army, he continued his broadcasting career with Armed Forces Radio and Television. In 1957, he was sent to Eniwetok in the Marshall Islands, an atomic bomb test site, part of Operation Hardtack. The last year of his Army service was completed in 1959 at the Army Pictorial Center in Long Island, New York, producing, directing, and sometimes acting in TV and motion picture Army training films. In October 1959, he joined WCCM Lawrence, beginning a career that would span more than 50 years. He also occasionally worked at WHIL and WBZ, where he was the regular fill-in host for Larry Glick and Bob Raleigh. In 1996, he played a vital role in bringing Haverhill's Bill Pike on the open mic back to radio. The segment, part of a larger program called Haverhill Today, aired on WCCM Sunday mornings until a revived WHAV could be launched. He will be inducted posthumously into the Lynn English High School Hall of Fame. Visiting hours at Catadella Funeral Home, 126 Pleasant Valley Street, Methuen, are Wednesday, September 23rd from 2 to 5 and 7 to 9 p.m. A funeral mass will take place Thursday, September 24 at 10.30 a.m. at Corpus Christi Parish at Holy Rosary Church, 35 Essex Street, Lawrence. Burial will follow at the Immaculate Conception Cemetery in Lawrence. Donations may be made to the Bruce Arnold Memorial Scholarship Fund, carer of St. Alfio Society, 20 Common Street, Lawrence, Massachusetts, 01840. More details can be found at whav.net. Further changes may be made to a recent compromise plan to raise downtown parking fees and add Saturday hours. The Haverhill City Council is being asked Tuesday to postpone for another two weeks action on the proposal to add a city councilor to the Central Business District Parking Commission and set limits on the actions the commission may take. The compromise measure from the council's administration and finance subcommittee was placed on file by the full council two weeks ago. Quote, several councilors have requested changes to the proposed ordinance, Ferentini said in a letter dated Friday to President John A. Mitchison and other city council members. Quote, therefore, I request the matter to be postponed until the city council meeting scheduled for October 6, 2015. End quote. Details were not disclosed in council agenda documents. In its present form, the ordinance would increase the Parking Commission panel with an added councillor from six to seven members. The Administration and Finance Committee agreed August 26 to recommend delegating the council's authority to the city's Parking Commission. While councillors would have option of striking down any increases, any such action would be inhibited by the inability of three councillors to cast votes. Councillors Melinda E. Barrett, Thomas J. Sullivan, and Michael S. McGonigal own businesses in the affected area and are prohibited from voting. The Haverhill City Council meets at 7 p.m. Tuesday in Council Chambers at Haverhill City Hall. 
In local high school sports, volleyball and field hockey, the highlights for the Haverhill Hillies on Monday. Girls freshman, junior varsity, and varsity volleyball teams are at Lowell High School. Girls junior varsity and varsity field hockey teams host Lawrence High School at Trinity Stadium. Remember, WHAV is the only Haverhill-based news source, and it's always free. In the Edwin V. Johnson Newsroom, this is Dana Esmail. From Feature Story News in Washington, I'm Kate Fisher. One of the Republican Party's contenders for the presidential nomination, Scott Walker, is pulling out of the race. It comes after the governor of Wisconsin failed to make a breakthrough in last week's debate. Our U.S. correspondent Lorna Shaddock reports. This is a sudden and surprising fall for Scott Walker, who led the polls in Iowa, a key early voting state, for several months earlier this year. That was after a well-received and fiery speech he made there back in January, speaking about how he stood up to angry protesters, which seemed to have inspired both grassroots Republicans and wealthy donors. For months, he was seen as a front-runner for the nomination, but seems to have failed to consolidate his support or live up to his early promise. A new CNN poll shows Mr Walker registering less than half of 1% support after a lacklustre performance in last week's Republican debate. Lorna Shaddock, New York. Meanwhile, US Vice President Joe Biden has cast fresh doubt on his readiness to seek the presidency. He's told religious magazine America that the death of his son Beau from brain cancer continues to take an emotional toll on his family. It's not quite there yet, and it may not get there in time to make it feasible to be able to run and succeed because there are certain windows that will close. But if that's it, that's it. But I, it's not like I can rush it. It's not like it either happens or it doesn't happen. I know that's not satisfying to anybody. The U.S. says it's still unclear what the intentions are behind Russia's continued military build-up in Syria. As the Obama administration repeated its position that it wants Russia to join the U.S. and partners in the fight against ISIS, it once again condemned any support given by Moscow to the Assad regime. On Monday, the U.S. State Department said it was unable to verify a Reuters news agency report that Russia had begun flying drone surveillance missions in Syria. Spokesperson John Kirby said military communication between the U.S. and Russia was still needed in order to address concerns over Syria. The fact that they are building up uh, or have additional military capabilities in Syria continues to give us concern. Uh, And that's why uh, we're in favor of some level of military-to-military communication for the purpose of deconfliction. But what they're doing and what they intend to do, you should ask them. Hungary's parliament has passed a law authorizing the deployment of the army and giving soldiers the power to use non-lethal force as they confront the migration crisis. Under the new legislation, the army is allowed to use rubber bullets and tear gas. From bureaus worldwide, this is FSN. Wave weather! I'm WHAV meteorologist Gary Best with Wave Weather. Some occasional cloudiness moving into the Merrimack Valley during the night. Low temperatures, upper 40s to low 50s. During the day Tuesday, partial sunshine and 65 to 70. Partly cloudy on Tuesday night. Low temperatures no lower than the low 50s then. And Wednesday and Thursday, mostly sunny skies up between 70 and 75. This is Gary Best. Your next Wave Weather coming up in 30 minutes. Tom Bergeron wants your help. He's the honorary chairperson of WHAV's Make Waves campaign to bring local news to FM. The sooner you contribute at WHAV.net, the sooner WHAV signs on at 97.9 FM. Just look for Tom's photograph. This is Pacifica Radio for the Merrimack Valley. WHAV LP Haverhill. Listener supported community radio. From the Edwin B. Johnson Newsroom, WHAV presents the Open Mic Show with Tim Coco. 
Make your voice heard. Call 978-374-1900. That's 978-374-1900. Or email tcoco at whav.net. This is the Open Mic Show. I'm Tim Coco, your host. Special thanks to Chris Porter, producing in Master Control. Thanks also to the guests we had earlier this evening, uh, Eva, Lisa, and David. All right, this hour of Open Mic being brought to you by the Merrimack Valley Economic Development Council. Smart companies choose the Merrimack Valley. All right, we are backed up on calls. Let me tell you folks what is happening. There are like 18 phones literally here in the office, and odd ones are ringing, and Instead of the ones we expect to ring. And so we've missed a few calls, so we're going to try to catch up now. So let's go first to, uh, I believe we have uh, Dave on the line. You're on the open mic. Yes, Tim, uh, this is a safety advisor. Yeah, our safety advisor. Is it the ice safe yet? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's opened up, unfortunately. <laughs> okay. Um, I have a couple of issues here. All right, good. The top of Mount Washington Street has very little sidewalk on the right-hand side going towards the Julian Steel, and the kids are walking out around cars and trucks to uh, get to school. And I just think it's a danger. Oh, that's right near Constantino School. Is that right? And, up uh, further. Okay. All the uh, way up to the end. All right, near Julian Steel, near the intersection with Lowell Avenue. Right, right. All right, okay. That's a good That's a good one to point out. So there's the, no the, sidewalks, or, or they're just too small? <laughs> about two feet wide two feet wide okay yeah. uh, I, I I said before I believe uh, we have a contingent of city councilors who listen to the program uh, maybe once someone will take that up thank you for bringing that to our attention okay I also have another issue all right I went to, to uh, watch my grandson play ball down at the Haverhill Stadium Sunday and they have no parking spots for handicapped people. I couldn't believe it. No parking at the stadium for handicapped. Now, that's a good one. That's a real good one. And I hope the mayor is listening to me because the fireman told me to park on the lawn, and I said I can't do that because, you know, I could get a ticket or whatever. But oh, there right. is no signs up whatsoever for handicapped, and I think there should be. Uh, that's a very, very good point. Uh, okay, so if the mayor is listening, if city councilors are listening, or perhaps um, uh, anyone in City Hall who could relay the message. Uh, because I, I see people going in with crutches, and they had to park away. You know, I'm handicapped myself, and uh, I just couldn't find a place. A fireman actually gave up his spot to give me, give me that spot. Oh, isn't that nice? All right. Well, uh, that's a very; those are very good points. I hope uh, I hope one of our counselors are listening. Are also going to make a note uh, and and actually uh, email those two points. So one is uh, Washington Street by Julian Steele sidewalks, and on the other side of the street. All right, uh, uh, on the school side, right? Right. All right, and yeah. then we have uh, no handicap parking by at uh, the stadium right and I'd like to remind the folks uh, that we have an upcoming event it's called a zombie walk you have a zombie walk what perfect timing to mention that tonight and that's for uh, from Mike uh, yeah the retired police officer Ozzy oh, okay Ozzy's kids Ozzy's kids right and I'm I'm help sponsoring it it's October the 10th I don't know the exact time, but there'll be gifts, prizes, and, um, you know, best costumes, music. It'll be a good time. So now, wait a I minute. hope the people out there are listening to this, and they'll take us up on it. It's it's uh, to, to collect for Ozzy's kids, everything that's going to Ozzy's kids. All right, we're gonna, we'll try to also get an item on our community spotlight about that. You know, Dave, I think it's about a year ago that uh, you mentioned... Uh, the idea of perhaps having a horribles parade in Haverhill around right. around this time. So right. maybe it was it. Did you inspire this? 
I did, yeah, this year. All right. Well, congratulations. You get things done, Dave. I hope that uh, it works out, and I think it will, because hey. we've advertised all over the place. All right. Uh, I, 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 don't, I hope that someone sent something to WHAV, but if not, I'll, I'll make sure I find it. But Zombie Walk uh, proceeds to benefit Aussie's kids October 10th. We'll, right. try, to, we'll try to get more information at WHAV.net. Yeah. There'll be hot dogs and whatnot, and uh, there'll be free prizes, and there'll be gifts given out, and, uh, you know, the... Can I it's go? With, be a good time. Can I go as a talk show host? You certainly can. <laughs> you can okay. sit beside me because I'm one of the uh, the executives there that's going to be the judge. A wonderful. So you better look good. Put your Halloween costume on. <laughs> all right. Hey. I want you to look scary. Oh, all right. A scary talk <laughs> show host. All right. I'll work that in. Uh, right. But this hey, is perfect timing. Care, perfect timing because we're promoting Snowbound with Zombies tonight. Are you really? Yeah. A uh, new book that's going to be released this weekend at Whittier Birthplace between 1 and 3 p.m. called Snowbound with Zombies. Oh, good. Tales of the Supernatural. Hey, I'll Dave. I'll have uh, them send you a card or something, uh, whatever they got paper with paper on it so you can uh, advertise it for us. All right. Actually, they can also email, if that's easier, T Coco, T C O C O at W H A V dot net. Okay, I'll try to remember that. All right, Dave, thank you so much. You really. take care, and I hope that they actually do something about the sidewalks up there because the cars go fast. And the kids are walking around them, and I don't like that. All right, good point. I'll send that also along uh, to a few folks in case they're not listening. Okay, right, thank, thank you very much, Coke. Right, you thank have you. a good night. You okay? too, thank you. Bye. Yeah, bye now. Always nice talking to you. I always enjoy hearing from you too, thank you. All right, bye now. All right, all right. we're going to take a brief break for Community Spotlight. When we return, we hope to have uh, one more caller that uh, we, we somehow missed earlier this evening. So we'll be, we'll be right back. Open mic! Tim Coco and the Open Mic will be right back. Get in on the action. Call 978-374-1900 or email tcoco at whav.net. If you are enjoying this program, please consider making a donation right now. Your donations to not-for-profit WHAV help keep these vital community services on the air. Donate online at www.whav.net. For live and local talk, listen to the Open Mic Show Monday nights. You can also see the program at whav.tv. WHAV, the only Haverhill based news source, and it's always free. Catch the wave! The most trusted man in America, news anchor Walter Cronkite, once said, It is absolutely essential in a democracy to have competition in the media, a lot of competition. That sentiment is one of the driving forces behind WHAV's expanded local news effort. This is News Director Dana Esmel inviting you to listen to my hourly weekday newscast right here on WHAV. You'll also find the area's most comprehensive local news reporting at whav.net on your computer or smartphone. Remember, WHAV is the only Haverhill-based news source, and it's always free. And that's the way it is. Community Spotlight! Haverhill Council on Aging is planning a trip to Symphony Hall for a Boston Symphony Orchestra morning rehearsal performance, Thursday, October 8th. The bus departs at 9 a.m. from the Haverhill Department of Public Works, 500 Primrose Street. The cost of the trip is $45 per person. For more information, call 978-374-2390. Someone you know is on WHAV. To submit or read your own nonprofit announcements, click on the contact tab at whav.net or email news at whav.net. In the Edwin V. Johnson Newsroom, this is Maddie Karen. Mike. 
From the Edwin B. Johnson Newsroom, WHAV presents the Open Mic Show with Tim Coco. Make your voice heard. Call 978-374-1900. That's 978-374-1900. Or email tcoco at whav.net. This hour of the Open Mic Show being brought to you by the Merrimack Valley Economic Development Council. Smart companies choose the Merrimack Valley. You know, an interesting point about the uh, fire. Uh, I know I think WHAV did it on its website, and newspapers across the Commonwealth uh, did it as well. We referred to that building on um, Stephen Street as a mill. And I saw a comment online today uh, disputing it. Uh, that in fact it was not a mill, it was uh, for manufacturing or for um, warehousing. And uh, I, I think there was one other thing that I've, I've, that escapes me. But uh, the, the author of that note is correct. He's a longtime listener of the Open Mic Show. And, um, you know, mill is not necessarily synonymous with factory or manufacturing or others, but it fits a headline better, I guess. So... A good observation by the uh, the listener who um, who is uh, frequently on the open mic show. Or at least we know that he listens uh, to the open mic show. So a very very good point. All right, next week on open mic, Senator Barbara Latalian is going to be on the program, and you know I have to say in the short amount of time she's been in office as a senator, uh, Barbara Latalian has. Uh, almost overwhelmed us with with information, uh, sending us so much information uh, that we had not seen from the State House in quite some time, at least not from the Senate. So I was very, very pleased uh, to uh, to confirm that Barbara's on as a guest. Uh, on top of all that, uh, she shouldn't be a stranger at all to our listeners or viewers. Uh, she at one time, before this district was redistricted, she at one time was our state representative. So I think... A, that's a that's a good reminder. I'd like. To, I hope I'll see uh, some of you at Snowbound with Zombies, uh, the book release, Saturday between one and three at Whittier Birthplace. That'll do it for the open mic show. We'll be back next week, and we'll be awarding the birthday or anniversary cake winner. Have a good night. Open mic. Join Tim Coco live on the open mic again next Monday night at 6.30. The opinions expressed on the open mic show are not necessarily those of WHAV, its underwriters, or affiliated stations. The open mic show came to you from the Edwin V. Johnson Newsroom. It's 8.30. This spot could have been yours. Support WHAV's local approach with your underwriting. Go to WHAV.net and click on advertising to reach thousands of new customers. Catch the wave! Hi, I'm meteorologist Gary Best. Do you need to know if it's going to be